Welcome to Beside the Burn for Tuesday the 14th of February. Once again, we are in the Gospel according to Matthew. We are finding out about Jesus the King and we're reading through the Gospel day by day. And it's important that we actually read the chapter each day uh, so that by the end of this time, uh, we'll have worked our way through the whole Gospel. We'll have been introduced to Jesus once again and we'll also see how lots of the stories fit together and how there is this overall theme in the Gospel of Matthew about Jesus being the King and about entering into the Kingdom of Heaven and that's what we're going to be looking at today once again but I do want to highlight what's happening next Wednesday the 22nd of February because uh, next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday the beginning of Lent and we're going to take the 40 days of Lent that's Monday to Saturday uh, each week, not including the Sunday. The Sunday is um, a day off in Lent. We're going to follow a book, Truly, Truly, I Say to You, by Adam Ramsey, which looks at the sayings of Jesus in John's Gospel. And there are links on the blog today to the book where you can buy it. There will be a limited number of copies available on Sunday in Burnside. And you can also pick it up at your local Christian bookshop as well, or you may need to order it. Now, the copies in church will be £7, and you can buy it at a variety of prices, up to about nine ninety nine in various different places. So I hope that all makes sense to you. I hope you're uh, ready for us to follow through. Uh, what's going to happen with the blog is we're going to follow uh, the uh, book Monday to Friday each week. And then the Saturday reading is what we're going to be looking at on the Sunday in church. So today we are in Matthew chapter 25. We're going to read all of the chapter together. Uh, so it's a long chapter, uh, so we'll have to get started. But uh, again, today is all about the kingdom and about how we enter into the kingdom. So we start off with a story about being ready for the kingdom and being ready for whenever Jesus returns. And it's all about the ten virgins. And you've probably heard the story before where five of them are prepared and ready for the bridegroom to come. But five of them aren't ready at all. They haven't thought about it. They haven't prepared. And whenever the bridegroom arrives, it is too late for them to get their lamps ready and to come into the wedding celebrations. Then there is a parable about how we prepare, what we do now in preparation for the kingdom, how we live our lives today. That's uh, the parable of the bags of gold, or probably we know this parable much better as the parable of the talents. And the king who's going away uh, gives his servants a certain amount of money. They are to look after it. They are to try and increase it while he's away. And then whenever he returns, they're called to account for what they've done with it. And again, it's a picture of the kingdom. It's a picture of the king and what happens with how we live our lives at the moment and how we invest in the kingdom and grow the kingdom in our lives. And then uh, finally, there is a story about the sheep and the goats. And this story is all about entry into the kingdom and how Jesus separates the sheep from the goats, those who come into the kingdom and those who are kept out of the kingdom. And as we look at the sheep and the goats, we see here that Jesus is telling us that as we live our lives here on earth, we're preparing for the kingdom again. Whenever we serve those who are in need, we're actually serving Jesus. And it's important that we do that. So how does all of this apply to our lives? Well, if we're thinking about sins that we need to avoid, it's very, very easy to get distracted in the world today. It's very easy to get distracted by the things of the world and we concentrate on what we see around us rather than the kingdom of heaven and what that means to us. We have a wonderful promise here that Jesus is coming back again. He tells us that he's coming back. It's a promise that he makes and we know that we can rely upon it. We've got the example here of the five wise virgins who are prepared, who are ready, who are waiting for Christ's return. And whenever he comes, it is no surprise to them. They simply meet him and they go with him. And there's uh, nothing that takes them by surprise. Uh, 
So what's the command? Well, the command that we have to follow here is to keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour when Christ will return. Only the Father knows. And so therefore we need to live our lives ready for him coming back again. And we have this wonderful knowledge that whenever we serve others, we are serving God. So let's read together from Matthew chapter 25 uh, verses 1 to 46. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not gathered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 
he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Amen. And let us pray together. Heavenly Father, once again we thank you for this insight into your kingdom. And Lord, we hear this recurring pattern within this gospel about your kingdom and how we can enter that kingdom. And Lord, we look to you and we find you and we see, Lord, that you welcome those who are prepared to come to you and be with you. So Lord, help us not to get distracted by the things of this world, but instead, Lord, may we prepare for your return, may we be ready for your return, and may we acknowledge you as our King, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.